Tuesday and actually happy Fat Tuesday as well. And of all days for this to fall on, it's actually pretty ironic that it fell on such a huge celebration day like Fat Tuesday because we are celebrating tonight. You guys, this is the one year anniversary of season sunflower hour. This is so huge, so exciting, exactly. This time last year, we were going live for the very first time ever. And I have to tell you, I could have never even guessed or imagined what this year was going to bring. It was so exciting. And to honor that, this entire show tonight, is going to be dedicated to just the celebration of our first year at Season Sunflower Hour. I can't wait. We're going to talk about all kinds of exciting moments. I'm going to give you guys little sneak peeks at maybe what was happening behind the scenes before or after we went live, some mishaps that we had that we had to turn around and find a way to make them interesting. Uh, some funny stories are going to come up, I'm sure. And we're going to get to see so many amazing individuals that have made the first year of season sunflower hour so special and there's ah, there's just so many things i want to share with you guys because let me just say first of all uh when we this I, this show started it was the amazing brainchild of julie and sam from the als association and they had this idea and honestly i thought i was coming in to maybe just film a couple interviews for them every once in a while like do a little a little like guest hosting here and there and then they developed this beautiful thing called Seasons Sunflower Hour. <laughs> oh, happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love seeing all of your messages come in already. Thank you for tuning in and watching. So this beautiful thing came to life called Season Sunflower Hour. And then it just took on this amazing new sort of life of its own. This show has exceeded every expectation I could have imagined for it. And this has been the absolute best year of my life because it has brought so many of the most incredible people into my life. I've got to meet some amazing and strong and encouraging and inspiring individuals that have the most beautiful stories. They've accomplished some of the most incredible things. And being the smallest part of getting to share those stories and those inspirations with you guys has absolutely changed my life. So this has been the best first year. And without further ado, I want to get into so Sam, you guys hear me talk about her all the time. She's the extraordinary woman behind the cameras. Not only does she have some amazing duties and responsibilities for the ALS Association's Greater Chicago Chapter, but she also produces the show. She does so much work behind the scenes that you guys don't get to see, but this girl is working endlessly to make these shows go off without a hitch and make me look like I know what I'm doing when <laughs> Let's be serious. I really don't. So she makes me look so good. She had this beautiful idea for this show, her and Julie. And so originally they said, hey, let's go over. Maybe you pick five of your favorite moments from the past year. And then I started sitting down and thinking about it. I mean, it's impossible. I can't pick five from a whole year. I couldn't pick five. So then I was like, OK, 10. I'm going to narrow it down to 10. And yeah, that was impossible, too. So I narrowed it down to 11 and that still felt impossible because as soon as I did it, as soon as I picked my 11 and sent them off, then I started thinking, oh no, what about this one? What about this one? What about this one? So realistically, I, no joke, have about 30 favorite moments from the show and that's probably understating it. So this was really hard to pick 11. So any anyone that's watching the show, um, if you didn't make the list of top 11, please know that it's not because you weren't a favorite moment. This was purely me like really hard trying to narrow this down because I would stay here with you guys for about five hours going through every moment of the show because all of them, <laughs> I'm not even kidding, all of them are my favorite moments. We've had some, some really great times with the show. So that is tonight's episode. So I'm glad you're along for this ride. Thank you to all of you. I do want to say this before I forget and get too excited in these clips from the past. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That word doesn't even seem big enough to describe how much love I have for all of you. Everyone that continues to watch and share and support and chime in with your comments and donate to our Tiltify campaign. All of you guys have turned this into what it is and that we wouldn't be here without you. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And so one year has wrapped in, in the blink of an eye. And because of you guys and your love and support, we are coming back for year two. 
and I hope many more years to come. You guys keep loving on us and supporting us, but thank you guys. And so th this past year was full of some huge things. And again, because of you, we were able to help cultivate through the show some incredible relationships that have led to some major gifts for the chapter, which is absolutely huge because, and if you're an avid watcher of the show, you know what I'm about to say, all of the services that the ALS Association's Greater Chicago Chapter provides are free of charge, free. No family pays a dime when they come to us between all of their care services that they provide, all of their support groups, all of the lending closet, the equipment that they give out, all of the things that encompass helping individuals live the best life with ALS, getting them the service that they need, providing, um, getting them into research and us researching and getting closer and closer to finding a cure. All of those were happening for free of charge and we couldn't do it without you guys. So that's another one of the reasons I'm so thankful for all of your support because all of those donations go to the best cause. So thank you again. <laughs> and also we've had some of the coolest guests on this year and I can't even, I can't name all of them, but let me just tell you that we've had published authors, award-winning authors. We've had a world-renowned DJ. We've had some of the most amazing scientists and doctors that are making some incredible headway in the field of ALS research and getting us closer to finding that cure. We've had some of our amazing care service coordinators from the chapter on to get to talk about what they do. And they all have varied backgrounds between being uh, social workers, clinical social workers, nurses. We've had uh, rock stars. We've literally had musicians on that have toured the world and played with some of the most incredible acts around the globe. We've had, oh, a singing firefighter. That was so much fun. He was such a blast. We had an individual who lost his brother to ALS and he wrote a song called ALS Blues and straight from the firehouse he was able to sing that for us which was a really beautiful moment. Ooh, we've even we've had somebody who went out and decided she was going to just hike for four months and she did. She hiked, I don't even remember how many miles, but it was amazing. I, I want to say something like 1600 miles. She went and hiked for four months to raise money for ALS. It's it's been crazy. I'm looking at my list here. We've, we've just had so many talented, like I said, inspiring and amazing individuals with great stories. And we could just share that all with you guys. So in the name of our happy one year anniversary, let's kick off the top. These are my top 11 favorite moments from this past year. Oh, before we start with the first one, Sam's going to kill me. Before we start with the first one, I do want to say this. So if you watch the live on Instagram, I told this little story already, but I wanted to share it with you guys. So last night I couldn't sleep. See, I was like a kid on Christmas morning. I couldn't sleep all night. I stayed up until like three o'clock in the morning. I was watching clips and videos of our previous episodes. And I just happened to watch the first ever episode. I was having these very nostalgic moments and I was just so proud of what we've been doing with the show. So watching the first one, I wish I would have put that in my list of favorite moments for you guys to see just so you could see where we were to where we are now because I cringed <laughs> watching that very first show. It was hilarious. Even just the the beginning when the show starts, you the background was was moving. I must have had the AC on or something and I had the camera not in the right position so you could see that it was a backdrop and you could see it fluttering in the corner, giving you a little peek into my living room. I mean, you know, we were we were figuring some things out back then. So getting to see where we came from and where we are now has been such a beautiful progression. So now I actually mean it when I say it, without further ado, let's get into this list of the of my top 11 favorite moments. So we're going to start with number 11 and it is. Oh, I love this. It's the Christmas video from our Sunflower Hour show guest. So let's show that. I love it. We don't hear any sound, Sam, but we see it and it looks beautiful. <laughs> so guys, what, as she's getting this going, what this was, um, 
we did this really cool thing when it came to Christmas. We reached out to every guest that had been on the show. We called them part of our Sunflower Hour family, and we let them submit if they wanted to some type of a video or any kind of message they wanted to send out to our viewers wishing everybody a happy holiday. And then again, the extraordinary Sam put together a little Christmas video that we showed on our December episode of Sunflower Hour. And so that makes my 11th favorite moment. This is the actual video of our past Sunflower Hour guests wishing all of the viewers of the show a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Look at this. I love this. We get to see a little sneak peek. Chestnuts roasting, open fire. Jack Frost hitting at your nose. Yuletide carols by a choir. Folks dress up like Eskimos. No, the turkey mistletoe. I love how the dog is just chilling and not even fades in this video, by the way. Eyes and nose. I'm going to find it hard to sleep tonight Because Santa's on his way Toys on his way Every mother's child I didn't notice this the first time I watched this video Does the dog sleep through the whole thing? I guess we'll find out <laughs> Merry yeah, Christmas and Happy New Year, everybody. Let's stay safe and healthy out there. This is in Kevin Nahara. Thank you for having me on your show. And I want to wish you and all of your viewers a very happy holiday season. That the sun is shining. It is absolutely a beautiful day outside. But I am thinking of Christmas, and I wanted to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. Let's all band together. Let's all work together to get rid of ALS. Just a personal note, thank you to Season for doing such a wonderful job with her show of bringing awareness to ALS. Um, highlighting the folks that uh, are working hard behind the scenes and highlighting uh, some of the families that uh, are really suffering because of ALS. Wonderful job that you're doing, Season, and we appreciate it. Um, to all of us um, who have banded together because of ALS, I, I want it to be a great new year for all of us. So um, here's to us. Thanks. Hi, Season. It's the Blahas. We just want to Say uh, thank you for having us on in your first season, and congratulations on your first season. And to everybody out there in the ALS community, we just want to wish you all a happy, happy holidays. holidays. You guys, I love this so much. You didn't know you were going to be coming to a Nutcracker performance tonight, did you? <laughs> Dancer here. We want to thank you for having us on Season Sunflower Hour. We want to congratulate you on wrapping up an incredible first year of your show. To raise awareness of ALS and raise funds to support our cause. And maybe more importantly, to highlight both the patients and caregivers doing battle with this awful disease. We appreciate and your unstoppable attitude. On behalf of Team Ricky, we want to wish you and all your viewers a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year here. We love you. Happy Holidays. Thank you so much for tuning in to the inaugural year of Season Sunflower Hour. We wish you guys a beautiful holiday season and all the best in 2022. Merry Christmas, everyone, and blessings from the Cochran family and the ALS family of faith. We're just so grateful for Jesus Christ, who's the greatest gift of all from our heavenly father. After all, it is only Jesus who gives us that hope.
for all of eternity. And especially as we navigate this crazy, awful disease of ALS. And for all of you who have not yet come to a saving faith in Jesus, I hope and pray that you will soon do so, so that at some point, all of us can be partying together in heaven. Once again, we hope you all have a very Merry Christmas and a very blessed New Year. Happy holidays, everyone, Southern style. I hope you can hear the banjo music in the background. I'm wishing you a happy holiday season from Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and they just started playing just for you. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. It's been my honor to work with you over the past year. I wish you and your family well. And as always, I'm here if you need me, and I look forward to serving you in 2022. Happy holidays! Yay! Guys, we have so many incredible members of our Sunflower Hour family. That's just a teeny tiny snippet of some of those guests we've had throughout the year. But how fun was that? We have so much talent in our Sunflower family. Oh, I second that. We have... We have great guests with the most amazing stories and, said, and talents. Like I said, you, you get to come and see the Nutcracker sometimes in our show. You never know what's going to happen. You never know what kind of talent you're going to get to see here. It's so beautiful. So that that video is one that, that always makes me smile. So I love it. That made my, my list of my 11 favorite moments at number 11. And moving on to number 10 on the list. It is a... This is one that we, it was a more recent episode that just happened last month, and it was Pat Harmon. And this guy, if you guys got to see this episode, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So Pat Harmon and his beautiful wife, the renowned DJ Val, they had such an incredible love story. So this episode, I could have talked to them for hours and hours and hours. So we did run a little bit long, but we got to hear their love story. We got to hear how he is battling ALS with such strength and such courage, what it means to the two of them and how it's changed their lives. And throughout the entire episode, I wish I could have been writing it all down. He had the most just amazing quotes on everything, on life. I think there needs to be a book written on all of the Pat Harmon sort of quotes and stories because they were absolutely priceless. So on my list, number 10 is the Pat Harmon amazing quotes. Let's hit you with one of those. <laughs> Reason you've been fighting this battle. How how are you doing? How is everything going for you? It, you know, it, it rearranges your life. It's like it's like you're playing you're playing Monopoly or chess, and somebody comes along and just knocks everything over off the board. You know, you, you just when you get that diagnosis, we it, it, if you took a list of like the fifty most important things in your life. Write them all down, and then you get that ALS diagnosis. Number three through fifty don't mean anything. Instantly, just rip that bottom part of the list off. And you know, we sold everything we had. You know, we moved somewhere that's more healing and quiet, peaceful. Um, I, I can't tell you how it just it clarifies what what's really important to life. I mean. If you go to that that list of 50 things that are important to you, how what items on that list are going to be around after you pass away? And the only thing left is love. That's it. Those are the amazing words of wisdom from Pat Harmon, and it's it's so true. The only thing that's left is love. And this one is worth going back. And if you guys missed this episode, watch it. It was our February 15th. It was our love episode of Valentine's Day. Because so these two, I'm going to give you this fun little story. They, when we did this pre-screen call, so I get to talk to all of the guests before we do the show and get to know them a little bit better. And we had the most amazing conversation. They are each other's lobsters. Because as uh, Valerie was telling me, lobsters mate for life. So the two of them saw each other. It was true love at first sight. They even met over games on Facebook. <laughs> so we gave a little shout out that, you know what, if you're single and you want to meet somebody, maybe try Facebook games because for them, it led to finding their soulmates and finding their lobsters. 
So yeah, they met, they met on Facebook. It was love at first sight. And you, you saw what he said here when ALS kind of hit them, they really reevaluated their life. They sold everything. They moved and they're just having their best life right now and, and enjoying every moment they can. And through this, again, I've got to meet so many great people. We sort of sparked a friendship and Valerie is obsessed with cows and chickens. And so where I live, I'm surrounded by beautiful cows and chickens. So we've been sending each other videos back and forth. Uh, when I take my walks, I'll send her photos of the cows saying hi to her or, you know, chickens crossing the road because they're everywhere around here. And they've been sending me videos of the most beautiful sunset. So just another example of how amazing this show is bringing great people into my life, into your lives, because you guys get a glimpse of all of this through the show and getting to know these incredible people. And in the words of Pat Harmon, all that's left is love. That's the most important thing. So take that opportunity maybe to think of him and just when you're doing things in life, don't get stressed, don't get worried, because at the end of the day, love is the most important thing. And, you know, the list of things that are super important when tragedy hits gets smaller and smaller. So good words to live by from the amazing Pat Harmon himself. And now scrolling down the list here, headed to the number nine spot of my favorite things in this past year. Oh, this one was so fun. Okay, so this was a trivia game that we did. We did around the time of the Masters, which was back in April of last year. It was a big deal for some of our for some of our viewers but also for some of our ALS community members they were huge golf fans and so this was the first time that I got to meet Mike and Carrie Ricky and to say that they changed my life is a complete understatement so that sparked a lifelong friendship and I just on the live earlier, I got to see Carrie again. I just love that family so much. So I got to meet them because they're huge golf fans. So we did a whole show themed masters. We had the signature Azalea drink, which they drink there. And we show, showed you guys how to make it. We did a little toast. And then we also had Catherine Jemsik on, who is, her family is golf royalty. And she has, she's a board member for our chapter. She's been a huge supporter with ALS. We actually host our golf classic every year at Cog Hill. So she is the president and she, her family owns Cog Hill. And it is a historic, if you're a golf fan, you know what I'm saying when I say the name. Cog Hill. It is a historic golf course. They have had um, celebrity pros play there. Like, I don't even know. I'm horrible. I don't know golf, but they've had, I believe it was four Masters champions have played at Cog Hill. It's amazing. And Catherine herself has played with last year's Master winner. Well, let me take that back. When the show aired last year, she had played with the previous year. So now we're, we're two years ago. So she played with the master, Rustin Johnson. She's golf royalty. So this whole show was themed all things mastered. And we decided to do a little golf trivia game. And now you're going up against a couple who has lived and breathed golf. They have volunteered most years at the masters themselves. They love it so much. And then also golf royalty who has played with masters winners owns a golf course that has been played by some of the greats in golf. I mean, I thought I could stump them. I really did. I was very wrong. I forgot that I was playing, that I was having this game with masters themselves. So let's take a look at the trivia game that went down between Catherine Jemsik and Mike and Carrie Ricky. Okay. The master, which was 1934 has been played every single year since, except for the three-year break they took for World War II. Where are the Masters held? Augusta, Georgia. <laughs> At Augusta National Golf Club. That was an easy one. I started too easy. <laughs> <laughs> Lesson learned for next time. <laughs> Is it? Horton Smith. Horton Smith. You got it. Catherine had it. That's okay. Yeah. Choices. <laughs> okay. I didn't know any of these. And actually, I had to fact check this because I thought, ooh, I think I read something different. But the first five years, it was actually called the Augusta National Invitational Tournament. Mm -hmm. Yes, it was five years later when they changed the name to the Masters. So. Bobby yeah. Jones thought it was too presumptuous to say that they were Masters. Mm -hmm. 
So he wouldn't agree to the title originally. They originally wanted to call it the Masters, but he wouldn't agree. I like this. I'm glad you know what's going on here, Kevin. <laughs> okay, so we're tied. It's we're true, tied. because I didn't. I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> Sergio Garcia and his wife named her daughter. Azalea. Azalea. Yes, lovely. Yes, we were over here sipping on some Azalea cocktail. <laughs> Okay, those cocktails were super amazing, by the way. Um, I don't remember now how to make them, but they're dangerous because, so a little behind the scenes here, I wanted to have it pre-made for the show and I did a little video that we posted on social media of how to make it, so I got to practice making it. And I think I got a little bit too addicted. Those are one of those drinks that you don't taste the alcohol in it. There's vodka in it, goes down real easy. So be careful. That's, that's my warning. They'll sneak up on you. Those Azalea cocktails. So the, the whole trivia game, though, was such a blast because I really was trying so hard to stump them. I thought I had some, those ones that we showed weren't the hard questions. But as it continued on, I asked them some really hard questions. They knew all of them. They just knew all of them. And speaking of my lack of golf knowledge, uh, before the show started, we have a little green room for our guests. And uh, Catherine was so kind to help explain to me because I didn't know any of the golf terms. And there was a couple, there's one of the words I didn't even know how to say. So not too ashamed to say I learned a few things that night on the show about golf. So all the golf lovers out there, I hope you loved and appreciated that show. And hey, make an Azalea cocktail because they're delightful. So that was our number nine spot on our list tonight on the countdown. So let's move along to number eight. Oh, another gem. <laughs> so my eighth favorite moment of the past year was one of our early episodes, uh, March of last year. It was the Traftons. They are amazing and incredible supporters of the chapter. They have been with us for a very long time. They run, they do all kinds of things. So they are a large family and two of the brothers, the Trafton brothers, have a restaurant. They were so generous to let me come in. And I'm gonna give you a little, I'll give you more of the backstory after the clip, but they let me come in and film throughout the restaurant. And it happened to be the weekend of St. Patrick's Day and the restaurant is very Irish. So it's a huge deal for them. So I got to go in, I got to get sort of behind the scenes. I got to go back in the kitchen, try some of the corned beef and cabbage. I got to learn about their famous margarita, their flight deck. It's a huge deal for them. And then they had this whole festival that I got to come back and just spend the whole weekend there getting to know them. They had Irish step dancers. I got to learn how to Irish step dance. So I'll give you more of these stories after we watch this clip, but this is my eighth favorite moment of uh, getting to celebrate and learn how to make margaritas and have their taste test with the Trafton Brothers. We are gonna make a pop shelf margarita. So he mm -hmm. hands me a glass and tells me to fill it up with ice. I know it's a very, very tough job. You know, you can't get too much ice. You can't get too little ice. It'll just throw the whole composition of the drink off. So this is a very special job I've been tasked with. <laughs> and I've already fired myself because I did not fill a glass up with ice properly. <laughs> so, learning curve, I have never in my life been a bartender. So learn a new thing every day. We're gonna start with some great Top Shelf ingredients like Don Julio. He does about a shot, shot and a half of Don Julio. I'm impressed because he doesn't even need to measure. He's a pro, he knows exactly what he's doing. Then comes the Grand Marnier. I'm clearly getting very excited. <laughs> now it's over to the rest of the ingredients. He goes equal parts of sour, lemonade and orange juice. And the most exciting part, I know, I feel like that's the part I can do, as you can see me saying. And he points out that I get the even better job. I get to try the margarita. Mmm. <laughs> Clearly, I like that part. Oh, so, so good. So yummy. Yep, I wanna keep it going. I don't wanna stop it. He reminds me we do have other things to do. Now he wants to take me over and show me the room. So we're all about a theme here, so I don't know if you can see this, but I'm wearing a Sunflower Hour apron. 
sunflower leggings. Because <laughs> You can't you see my shoes, but I have a uh, sparkly, glittery shoes with sunflower <laughs> laces. <laughs> I love everything about this show and I am so excited to dress in sunflowers from head to toe. So j just putting that out there. So some funny, some funny behind the scenes moments about this show. I hope you find this as entertaining as I do. Uh, <laughs> this show in my head, I had all these amazing ideas of how was, it was going to go down. And then when it actually came time with scheduling and getting, getting out there, we weren't able to have our sound guy and master who was there. So <laughs> I had to figure it out on my own. And anyone that knows me knows how silly that is because me and technology, we just, we don't love each other as much as we should. And we had these new microphones, the, the portable mic packs, so that we would be able to have great sound for this video. And I made the mistake of like taking them out, playing with them, like thinking I figured it out. And rookie mistake I massively messed up and I put us, if anyone's in the tech world, you'll know how silly this is, but each mic pack for, for A and B have to be on sort of different channels. And I had us on the same channel. So we filmed this whole thing. We did this whole beautiful interview, heartfelt interview, got a little teary eyed. Uh, and then we did this whole thing in the kitchen and with the margaritas and touring. And I mean, hours of footage was happening and it was perfect. And then all of a sudden, no sound. <laughs> so you got to see me do a voiceover and made the most delicious margaritas. By the way, I'm not a huge margarita fan, but I can't get enough of theirs. Mango margaritas, next level amazing. They have all different kinds of flavors and tastes and it was incredible. So that day was great. I got to learn how to Irish step dance, which is really fun and also a disaster. So all in all, it was an incredible time. That's why that made my list at number eight. It was such a great night. Ooh, my next one, number seven. Woohoo! So it was fun. We got to, uh, Jen Beckman came on and we got to make, at this point I was in Indonesia and one of the things that you can find everywhere here from street vendors to restaurants is corn fritters. Huge. So we, this was really fun. I got to instruct, Jen didn't know what we were going to make, but she was game to just do whatever. So I just gave her a list of ingredients. She went and got them and had no idea. And then we revealed live on the show what we were actually making. And she took us into the kitchen with her and she had her beautiful assistant. And the two of them made corn fritters based on me trying to give them instructions through our live show. So it was a really fun experiment and they turned out amazing. So let's take a look at Jen and her beautiful daughter making some corn fritters in honor of Indonesia. <laughs> Yeah, it's coming. Um, and corn fritters are amazing, by the way. If you haven't tried them, you should do it. And watch the show because the recipe is super easy to make. Right. You know, that was the first one. Yeah, the first okay. one is trial, right? So, it's true. Trial. The first one ever <laughs> counts. Hey, Maddie, what do you think about the smell now? Do they smell good now? I think it smells good. Oh, I love this. So this was some of the ingredients, Ooh. and that's what they were supposed to okay. look like. Okay, so that, guys, that's what they should look like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, okay, there we go. That's perfect. That's what they should look like. So Jennifer, throw up there. Let's give them a little something, something. Show what they do look like. Ooh, hold on. I got to put it on a spatula. Okay. Oh. Ooh. You know what? That's close. Ish. I mean, ish. Yeah. I think we're on to something. Okay. It's a little, it's all right. I mean, it's. I love this. So Maddie, her daughter, what you guys got to see her in the Christmas video. She was the one dancing the nutcracker. She's amazing. So she decided to come in and help her in the kitchen. You try it first. You're going to try it. All right, Maddie's going to try it first. Make sure it's not too hot. And make sure it's done in the middle. <laughs> okay. Anything you It's good? Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yay. Are you, are you telling the truth or just because you're on a, on TV or on a show? No, you're not telling no, the truth. So <laughs> is this a two thumbs up? Is this a Maddie approved recipe? 
I love it. So it is it is kid approved. If you want to check that episode out to get the recipe, it was super, super, super easy to make. And they looked incredible. They did such a great job. So so she has never made these before. And I probably gave horrible instructions, but they did it. They made them. They tasted delightful. And while she was in the kitchen, we got to talk about some really great ways that her and her entire family raise awareness for ALS. They make it a, a family event, which is really cool. So you guys check that episode out for the recipe. You won't regret it, I promise. Yeah, those corn fritters. Oh, and by the way, uh, part of the episode, when they started making it and she was get, putting the ingredients together, her daughter Maddie uh, was horrified and thought it smelled awful. So <laughs> we weren't off to a great start. So the fact that by the end of it and once they were made and Maddie tried them and she actually liked them was a huge deal. So they said, if you have little ones at home, these are Maddie approved, they're kid approved. So I'm sure your kiddos would love them too. Ah, Gary chimes in that he loves the show. Well, thank you. I agree with you on that too. I love all the things we do on the show and I love you too. I love you. Thanks for watching the show. Okay, so now we have, you got to, to see some margaritas. You got to see some corn fritters. We played some games. We're moving along the list to the number six spot. Ooh, another good one. So this one was with two incredible women. So one of our care service coordinators, Peggy, who is a absolute rock star. I continue to hear her name over and over about how special and amazing she is and the bond that she creates with those that she serves is just incredible. One of her beautiful, shining, amazing ALS warriors, Colleen, came on the show and she has a vulvar ALS. So throughout the show, she explains to us what that is that attacks the vocal cords first. So um, it, it's a little bit harder to understand her. So I hope you guys can hear what she's saying here because it was it was amazing. So she, the whole episode is very inspiring. We played a game with them too. She talks about some of her favorite uh, wishes, some things that she wanted for the future. But I want you guys to just take a, take a check out of her. <laughs> I started talking about Colleen and I can't even put words together. Check out Colleen <laughs> being the fabulous self that she is. I mean, I'm Well, how I say you go in the room? I mean, I'm this way. If I want a caregiver to know what to expect, if I want somebody newly diagnosed, to prepare what to expect, then for me, that makes sense. That's how you learn. It's true. You're not going to know how to react by any means, which I do love. because. And you explain a lot of the reasons. You explain why you're, um, you know, dabbing your mouth. You even you go through what it's like to eat. Well, uh, I mean, things I wouldn't have even thought of. I mean, I know most of us get up and we're hungry. We eat food. It takes us seconds. We put it down. Oh. And move on. Right? Do you miss those days? It's not like that. For I do. I do. I miss the days. And, oh, hey, I'm going to go and do this. I'll grab and go. No. I'm not really having that opportunity. And now I have to plan like well half hour to eat now the whole day bump bump is guys you all guys that's just a little clip of how amazing colleen is i don't know if you can tell from that but this girl's light just shines and so what she's talking about is her i, I love the name of this she has a youtube channel called got balls <laughs> serious, got B-A-L-S because she has bulbar ALS. And so we were talking in that clip about the fact that she is so open and so vulnerable 
on that ALS channel and you can really get a good idea of what she's going through because she doesn't hold back. The things she talks about are hysterical, but she finds a way to turn these horrible moments and, and address all of the things ALS takes from you, but she spins it in such a funny way with themes and it's, it's amazing. This girl is incredible. So if you haven't done it already, make sure you head to YouTube and check out Got Balls. You'll learn a lot about ALS ball bars and you'll get to fall in love with Colleen just like we did. But I wanted to share something from that episode that we didn't get to show you in the clip. But um, Colleen was talking at one point about her daughter and how much she wanted to inspire her daughter. And so she told us that when she was diagnosed with ALS, she, I mean, it hits you, but she said she realized that, um, I'm going to quote this from Colleen, I need to be strong for my teenage daughter. What do I want her to see and learn from a challenge? In what ways do I want her to tackle the world? So I decided with the 18 months, uh, by the way, the form of ALS that she has, has a life expectancy of 18 months. So this was her reaction after she found out she was diagnosed with Bulbar ALS and was told she has about 18 months to live. I decided that with the 18 months, I better get cracking on that list. I have so many things I wanna do, and I want my daughter to see and experience. I want to make an impact. And how do I want to be remembered? That is my driving force. And that right there sums up the kind of woman that Colleen is and the thing. Exactly. Exactly. Nothing stops Colleen, no matter what. Oh, I love this. She's always finding solutions. Look at that. <laughs> it's true. I, I want to see those pictures too from the road trip. So Colleen is just this ray of sunshine that no matter what is thrown at her, no matter how hard and how heavy this disease is, she still has a smile on her face. She approaches every day with the most amazing energy. And we did a little game in that episode where at one point I asked them if she had a wish jar or a genie and she could make some wishes come true, what would she want? And beyond the obvious of a cure for ALS that was first on the list, but she had some other great ones like big hair. <laughs> She wanted some big hair. She wanted the ability to be able to eat everything and anything in sight without gaining any calories or without um, having a tummy ache and for her kids to have fulfilling lives. So that was a little glimpse into the amazing, not only relationship that Colleen has with her care service coordinator, Peggy, but um, the kind of women that both of them are. So if you have a chance, check that episode out. And it's great. That's why it made my list at number six. I love the two of them very much. So Colleen, if you see this, I love you, Peggy. Thanks for tuning in. I love you too. Okay. Number five on our list. Dun, dun, dun. Ooh, this one is awesome. It's <laughs> I'm going to let Sam show this. So it's not actually, cause I can talk through it while you're showing it. I think it's not actually from a live show, but it's from our golf outing. It's from the ALS Association's Golf Classic that we have every year at Cod Hill. Okay, look at this, first of all, by the way. So Sam, the day before it even began, Sam went and decorated a cart, and I got to be with Sam, and this was back in person, which was huge. Sam and I got to drive around. We had the best day. Sam's a really good golf cart driver, by the way. Not only can she decorate the heck, out of a cart, uh, we got to ride around in that chariot all day, but we got to go around and we got to interview golfers live on the course. We got to talk to some of the sponsors. We got to interview the musical act. And there's Peggy. There's We, were, we just got to see her in that interview, our care service coordinator. We just had the best day. And I, well, first of all, I love the heck out of Sam. There's Steve. He was another guest on our show. He is absolutely incredible. He started Family of Faith, and I believe it is ALS Family of Faith Center is that website. You can go there, and if you've been diagnosed with ALS, it's just a great, strong community that's Christ-based that you can have support and love with people that are going through the same thing you are. So he found a void in the world for that service, and he created it, which was really cool. And another great thing I loved about this day was the Rickies, who you've heard me talk about already. They were they were in the Christmas video, and there they are. So Mike and Carrie, they came out all the way from Peoria. So they drove, I think that's an hour and a half or something, hour and a half, two hours, which it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's very hard for, it was very hard for Mike to travel. So they made the trek all the way out there to secretly surprise me and so that we could meet in person and hug. And it was one of my favorite moments. That's, that's the Rickies and their son. 
And there was this really beautiful moment that happened. Oh, I love that car. I can't get enough of that golf cart. Sam, I feel like we need, we need to have that actually. <laughs> I would like that here, and I would like to be able to drive that every day, decked out in sunflowers, because I really miss it a lot. <laughs> that's I'll finish the Ricky story, but that's Sarah. She is another beautiful ambassador. She, This girl, I have said it from the beginning. I'm claiming it. She's going to change the world when it comes to research. She is working on, I believe, her PhD right now, her doctorate. One, one of the, she's so smart. I can't even keep up with it. She works in the lab and this girl's going to find a cure for ALS. I'm absolutely sure of it. But one of my favorite moments from this night was if you can get even better than getting to meet everybody and interview them and have Sam drive me around on this beautiful sunflower donned golf cart, uh, the, the musical guest prize fighter who they're amazing. They, this is their second time coming back and performing on the show. They are performing at the golf classic. They had this beautiful moment out on the golf course. They lost a relative to ALS and they saw Mike Ricky in a wheelchair on one of the holes. They saw him. It inspired him. There's this beautiful story. You'll have to watch the episode to get more of it. But we were able to introduce the two and it was such a beautiful moment and it meant everything to the Rickies and it was heartwarming. So watch the show for the full story on that. But the golf classic makes my list. It was amazing. Move it along. Uh, number four on my list. I can't believe we're already at number four. So Grandpa Frank's candy. This makes the list for many reasons, but one, I like candy. <laughs> Plain and simple, I like candy and it was caramels and the Mark Bridges founded this Grandpa Frank's candy for his grandpa named Frank. <laughs> yeah, oh, um, yep. I got real excited about caramels there. So one of the benefits to getting to host this show is I have to taste the products we're going to talk about. So I got a beautiful sampler pack. I got to try all of the caramels that he makes and incredible. And I have to say a little bit of uh, information. My family's going to laugh at me for calling them out on this. So I got this beautiful sample pack with, I don't remember, I used like 24 pieces of caramel of all the kinds that he makes. And I, I was eating them and I was hiding them. My family found the stash of my grandpa Frank's caramels and ate all of them. I was very upset about that. So I'm going to have to order some more because now that I'm watching this, I'm realizing how much I love them and miss them. And I'm extra mad at my family, specifically my dad, who I know is watching the show, for stealing and eating all of my caramels. Exactly. At least he owns it and admits to the fact that he ate all of them. So watch that episode because it's a really cool story on how this came to be, how Grandpa Frank's candies were created in memory of his grandfather. And by the way, it was extra special to me which is why it made number four on the list because my friend who passed away from ALS, the reason that I came to the ALS Association's Greater Chicago chapter, his name was Frank. So that was extra special for me. So in honor of Frank, I got to enjoy those amazing caramels and share some more stories. So grandpafrankscandy.com, check them out. They're amazing. And they did a really cool give back to us also. So lots of good stuff happened on that episode if you want to go back and check it out. Oh, number three on the list. This is so fun. <laughs> so Sabrina Johnson, she is another huge advocate for ALS awareness, and she is one of our ambassadors for our Greater Chicago chapter. That girl, let me just say, she talks a big game. So she came on the show a few times, actually. Um, she lost her father, Tone, to ALS, and it sort of changed her world, and it became her mission to spread the word, raise awareness, and to help other people that are in those shoes, help them get the resources that they need, much like the ALS Association. So we had a little challenge on the show and we were, thanks to all of you and your donations, every time we would hit a milestone, something new would happen. One of those milestones was a try not to laugh challenge. And I just have to say that Sabrina Johnson is great with social media. And so she was putting out all these amazing, hilarious sort of, um, things and videos and little memes and leading up to this challenge. She was really hyping it up. And that girl was talking a big game. And Sabrina, I hope you're tuning in for this because I know you'll have something to say about it. She was talking a real big game that she was going to beat me. And we had some pretty big things at stake here. So we had to, I despise onions with everything that I am. And so does she, the loser 
of this challenge had to eat a raw onion like an apple, there was no way I was going to lose this challenge. No way. She was so confident she was going to win. Well, I'll just let the clip speak for itself on how that played out. <laughs> this is the do not, uh, try not to laugh challenge with Sabrina and I. Thanks to us reaching our goal and all of you donating. Let me just think of one. Okay, maybe next time then, okay? I'm going to take this bite and then we're going to log off. Yeah, on okay, so here you go. She yeah. lost. Thank you for having me. Thank you for donating. My stomach will thank you all as well. Hold your breath. Oh, welcome. Oh my god. (laughs) Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm laughing to hold back my tears (laughs) of pain for you. (laughs) Oh. Oh. Everybody, thank you guys so much. Oh, thank you so seven hundred dollars. Thank you for everything. We appreciate you guys more than we can say it. Oh. We're going and tune in to the next season, Sunflower. Yeah, I was. Uh, that was no joke. I was laughing through my extreme discomfort for her. You could hear it crunch. You could hear the crunch of the onion. <laughs> Even just rewatching that makes my stomach turn. So you know, Sabrina. I hope you're watching. Your confidence was shattered when I beat you. And not only did I beat her once, but she wanted a rematch because she was so sure that that was a fluke and that she was going to beat me the second time. And, uh, you know, we had a rematch. And can I just say that on the second one, I don't even need to show you a clip of this. I'm just going to tell you what happened. On the second one, I beat her again. So, haha, double time. And on that one, she had to take a giant uh, bucket of cold water and her, her adorable son, Thor, got to throw it on her head, which was really awesome. So, <laughs> I'm still going to take that victory. I don't, I don't win many contests. So, I'm going to take that victory straight to the top. And I beat Sabrina Johnson twice at the Try Not to Laugh Challenge. So, that makes a number three moment because it just makes me smile when I think of it. We're getting down there. Two more left. So my number two favorite moment of the past year of the show was painting. I got to paint sunflowers. We can probably talk through this clip too, unless, uh, unless we're saying something pretty profound here. So Michael Robinson was a guest on one of our past episodes. He's a such an interesting man. So he's a retired physician and a retired pharmaceutical executive. There he is. There's his handsome smile and face. Okay. Doesn't require any kind of special user calibration. It it can be oh, if you so cool. back surgery. Because I saw three physicians during the initial mm-hmm. part of the diagnosis, and some one one they wanted to I do back it. surgery on me. They thought it was related to uh, uh, my back, um, and it wasn't. And I didn't think it was. And because I didn't think that, I decided to get second opinions. And it turns out I was right, unfortunately. So, so I love this. And you made, about, you made a great point when we were talking about it. it Sam. So he's talking about uh, his diagnosis on how, unfortunately, with his medical background, he knew it was ALS before he was actually diagnosed. But what I want to tell you about this clip, I love this. So I don't have any artistic ability. I struggle drawing stick figures. And so I heard that Mike picked up this hobby recently. So he has never been a painter. He's never taken any art classes. He hasn't studied this just when the pandemic hit and he was trapped at home. He was looking for something to do to pass the time and looking for a new hobby. So he decided, oh, why not take a painting? So I heard this and thought, oh, this is going to be so fun. Let's paint on the show because, you know, He's never really done this before either. Um, I can't, I mean, I knew I was going to be awful, but I was like, I can't be that bad. He's a newbie too. Okay. So not at all what happened. Um, Michael sent me some photos before the show and I, I instantly thought, what the heck did I do? Why did I get myself into this? His little, oh, I've never painted before. I've never took a class. I just picked this up. I didn't believe it. (laughs) It's true. It really is true, though, by the way, guys. I'll have to show you. You'll have to tune into my social media because I'll put up some pictures of of his artwork. Holy smokes. Yeah, I don't know if Sam's looking. (laughs) There's our sunflowers. So we we got to paint sunflowers live throughout the interview, which was really cool. Obviously, his is so much cooler. 
Oh, this is so beautiful. Michael, if you're watching, I, I would love to buy that sunflower from you. I think that needs to be hanging up in my office in the little sunflower hour studio that needs to make an appearance. So I got to find a way to make that happen. But uh, he sent me some photos of his artwork and blew me away. I was showing everyone I knew for weeks. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Because there's no way this guy was just born with this talent. I mean, if he's such a shining example of people who are truly just born with a gift, they don't have to foster and grow it. They just have it. And his artwork from the get go has been incredible. So that was a really fun thing. And one thing I want to say about that episode too, is you guys should check that out. If you're very interested in the science and the evolution of, of technology and where it's going in regards to ALS advancement, because he talked about this really cool thing that you can put on, um, let's see, it's brain communication interface where it's instead of having to have surgery where they go in, which sounds awful. This is, you can wear glasses or a headband or even use an app. And it basically community, it lets you communicate with your brain activity, which is so cool. He explains all of that in the episode, but for someone with ALS towards at, at a stage of the disease, it takes your voice away and you're unable to communicate with your words. And so this was so huge because it gives you the ability to be able to communicate with your brain waves, like get a hold of your caregiver or change a song or change a channel or send a text, all kinds of amazing things. So this technology is amazing. And Michael is part of the research that is happening to make this happen. So check that episode out because it's really, really awesome. And here we are. Dun, da, da, da. If I had a drum, I would give us a little drum roll here. So the number one spot, this ranks my number one. And again, there were so many, I, there's oh, like, 30, 40, 50 things that really are on my list, but I had to narrow them down. So the number one favorite moment from this past year, this sums it all up, that love really is the most important thing, is this episode. It doesn't need any introduction. Let's just show it. <laughs> all the time. The love they have for life and for each other is just, it's, it's absolutely breathtaking. So without further ado, please welcome back to the show, Mike and Carrie Ricky. Yeah. Oh, oh, hey now. I love this. We'll give, we'll give you a moment, you two. My goodness. Love is in the air. Can I just say that? Mike, you, you handsome man seducing your wife over there. What's going on? <laughs> That is my all-time favorite moment because that couple is just the love there, the way they looked at each other, the way they interacted. I can't even put it into words how beautiful their love story was. And that episode, I was cracking up even after we stopped pulling the cameras. I couldn't stop laughing. I had to watch it over and over. We caught them in this like hilarious makeout moment, which is just awesome. That sums it up. And I think another, I want to give you a quote from Mike from that episode that was really beautiful. Mike said that when he was first diagnosed, uh, his initial reaction was to close off and go inward. But pretty quickly, he started to accept it, to embrace it, and realized how important it was to have something good come from this. He wanted his kids to see how he dealt with adversity and wanted his friends to see that his faith was important to him. And he was not going to crumble under the news. And I just have to say that he never, ever, ever did. That he battled this disease with courage and just that smile. You guys could see it. He was still sneaking kisses and making out with his wife every opportunity he had. And unfortunately, one of the hardest shows I've ever had to do was when we had to make this announcement live that um, Mike lost his battle to ALS in December. We just lost him. And they are going to be, the family is having their very first Mike Ricky golf event this September to honor him. But everything we do here on the show, everything the chapter does, everything I do, we're going to continue to honor Mike. We're going to continue to keep fighting for Mike so that no one else has to lose their husband or their father or mother or brother or sister. We want to put an end to this. So they are a beautiful reminder of the love and just 
hope and courage that all of our members of the Sunflower Hour family have. That's why it made my number one spot because, oh, they just make me smile. <laughs> I know that Carrie is going to be watching this episode. So Carrie, I'm glad that I got to meet you and Mike. And you guys, by the way, we're going to wrap this up. I am, that, that was my top 11. So again, it was so hard to pick those. That was my top 11 favorite moments from the past year. Thank you to everybody that has joined the Sunflower Hour family, everyone that has watched and continue to support us. Please keep doing so because it means so much. We love all of you. And if you want to kick it up a notch and keep supporting outside of the Sunflower Hour show, we have the Walk to Defeat ALS coming up. The Chicago Walk is kicking off on June 4th. <laughs> it is not too late. Registration is open, so you can still get in on that. And if you want, I mean, you can make your own Sunflower Hour team, which I think would be super cool. I'd love to walk with you guys. So that's coming up. Make sure you check out our website, ALSA chicago.org. It'll have all the information up there. Sam's going to put the link in the comment section. I know that she will. Um, you can reach out to us and ask us any questions, but it's so amazing. And you can join that walk team. Most of the guests we've had on this past year have had beautiful experiences with the walk. So you'll get to meet some of these people that you've been seeing on the show, which is really cool. So make sure you join that. And again, I can't believe we've had, oh, I love that. You're right. I look forward to many more years too, you guys. Seriously, your support means everything. Thank you for sticking with us for a year. I can't wait for you guys to see what we have to come because it's going to be even bigger and better in year two. I just know it will be. So guys, if you have your drink, and I'm saying this and I forgot to bring it over here to the desk where I'm at, but I did have a drink. But if you have one, let's raise a glass. Let's cheers together to the first year of season Sunflower Hour. I'm gonna give a little magic toast here. So clink, clink, cheers to the best year. Thank you guys for everything. We'll see you for some amazing magic in the year to come. And until then guys, until I see you for the next live episode, be bright and keep on shining your light. Thank you guys so much.